villagers. You can do so much with them. They're so useful, but they are so hard to breed and multiply and you can never get enough of them. Well, don't you worry. I'm gonna show you how you can make as many villagers as you want in your own villager breeder. Don't you go anywhere. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from my farm tutorial series. And today, we're gonna to look at being able to build up the number of villagers that you have available to you because they're quite important. You can make all kinds of things with villagers. Most importantly, you can make things like iron golem farms, which are huge, huge, huge important things because you can never have enough iron. And villagers are really, really useful. So we're gonna show you how to breed pretty much an infinite number of villagers that you can then go around and use in whichever way you would like. It's gonna be an absolute doddle, really, really simple, very, very simple redstone on this one as well. If you enjoy the video, make sure you slap that like button really, 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 really hard because the villagers want you to. Honest, I asked them. Seriously, they said they wanted you to slap the like button. So make sure you do turn that blue. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell so you never miss another one of my videos. You can see on the screen how to hit that notifications bell. It could not be more simple. Now you've done that, which is absolutely amazing. Let's get on with this tutorial. We're going to approach this in two stages. The first stage is the actual farm itself, which is really the only bit you do definitely need. And you need to find yourself a nice open bit of space that you can build this on. And it needs to be a minimum, a minimum, a minimum of between 60 and 70, at least 64, I think, blocks away from the nearest village and the nearest set of doors and villages, most specifically. So make sure it's a long, long way off from that. And the second part is going to be kind of a little system that I've never seen anywhere else before, but it could be, I suppose, I've not watched everything, but that transports your baby villagers away from your village center so as you don't get overcrowded, which makes it infinite, but in a way that takes absolutely no kind of iron to transport it whatsoever. And it just looks cool. It's completely wasteful. It is completely over the top and it is a little bit of a laugh, but we're gonna do it anyway. So make sure you watch to the end of the video so you see the whole of it there. But first off, let's get the main bit done. First thing you wanna be considering is where do you want your exit point, your collection point for these villagers? And when you've worked it out, I want you to create a tower that is four high, exactly like that, four high. And then to one side of it, I want you to get whatever block it is you're going to be making your primary platform out. I recommend stone simply because it's a lot easier to work with. That first tower should be in something that's dead, dead easy to mine. And you want to come out one, two, three, and four on one side. And on the opposite side, I want you to come out eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you've got kind of a, an, a dodgy looking T. And then you're going to do exactly the same coming in this direction. One, two, three, and four. Then the other side, you're coming out and you're going to create one, to find out you get close enough, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then what we're going to do, so you can see from above, that's fairly even, we're going to finish off this platform to make sure it is a complete square. So let's get that done. That is one full platform. And then we want to get some dirt. And next to our exit, but not on the exit, we want to create a square that is three by three. It's not very big, it's three by three. And then on the outside of that square, we want to get our stone and create a ring around where that square is like that. So we're basically making a channel all the way around that dirt block that is three by three. Not there. So we got something that looks exactly like that, which is brilliant. And then we want to fill out the rest of this um, platform around that channel. So let's get that done as well. Okay, that's brilliant. So we've got the startings of our uh, farm. So we now we need to come underneath here and we need to kind of build it up a little bit around here because we want to uh, not lose any of the villagers, uh, the baby villagers specifically that are gonna come out here. So we want to kind of build a rose around this dirt like this. It doesn't have to be a complete square, it can just be a rose like that. And then, come this side, this is going to be the exit point and you can lose that entire row. And then come across the top like that and you want a too high uh, gap because that then is plenty big enough 
for the villagers to come in and out. We're going to come back to do something else with that in a minute, but for now, that will do. Now, you've got a bit of a choice. You can either spend hours and days and years of your life collecting up a load of villagers to stick into this farm, or you can make this farm with just three villagers. That's right, just three villagers is all you actually need to make this farm. But if you're going to do that, and you're going to do it effectively, you need to be able to block off this channel. Otherwise, what's going to happen is every time you breed the villagers, um, the baby villager is just going to fall off the platform and end up in your collection system. And you're never going to increase the numbers and your efficiency is not going to grow. So what you need to do is you need to be able to block this channel off. Come along to the edge of the platform here. So one in from the corner and get to one back and stick a sticky piston in there. Then two, then three, and then four. And then repeat that process. Leave a gap, come in there. One, two, whoops, not there. Two, three, and four, like that. And then you just wanna do that on all of the sides. And then lastly, on this side as well. Like that. When you've done that, you wanna get yourself a solid block. So stone or wood is absolutely awesome. And put them on the face of each of these sticky pistons here, just like that. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you ability to block off this channel completely. This one's gonna get pushed and that one is gonna get pushed to cover the corner. So you can see that will act as a complete coverage and will block all of these villages in, giving you the chance to uh, breed them up to as whatever level you want to do before you kind of open the sluice gates that allows any babies to be washed away into your collection system. And then behind all of the sticky pistons, you need to get yourself a repeater that feeds into each of the sticky pistons like this. And once you've done that, you are going to be ready to be able to test that the system works. So let's get one into each of the back of these. And then we're going to connect it up with, unsurprisingly, some redstone. So let's get all the redstone along here, like that. Goes into the back of all of them. Doesn't matter that it joins up, in fact, you want it to. And then get yourself another repeater and de decide which direction you're going to come from. Now I'm going to come from this corner over, th over there. So I want a repeater to go in that way and a repeater to come out there you can use it kind of place your repeaters wherever you want really it doesn't matter I've just made the decision that I want to put them there and come back there and place a repeater in there shall we say and then no actually I'm gonna put it there I'm gonna get some redstone we're also going to put a repeater in there and get some more redstone because this is going to be the corner that we use to create the activation and we're going to come across there, across there, across there, across there, one there, another repeater there. And then link up all the redstone. I'm going to put a bit of redstone there, another repeater there, and then join that redstone up. Another repeater there, and more redstone until you've got a complete circuit. And then what we can do is we can come to this section here, and we can get ourselves a lever stick the lever in there and you can just test that the system works. It's always good if you do a little bit of redstone before you do anything else just to test that the system works. So flick that lever and all of those should form a nice ring around that dirt and if you flick that lever off they all open up again. So that's a good working system that we can build upon. The next step is to create a false village, otherwise the villagers won't actually breed. It's one of the conditions for them to breed is they need to be in a village and they need to be fed and they need to be basically willing to do the business. So the best way to do that is to create something above this platform, which is where they're going to be living. If you create it above the platform, um, that means that it will affect them as being within the village radius in terms of affecting them wanting to breed. But it, if you do it high enough, it means it won't be included within the population count because the number of doors defines how many people or how many villagers you can have in your village. It looks, how many doors have I got? How many villages have I got? Right, let's make the villagers up to about 40% of the number of doors. And we don't want to put hundreds and hundreds of doors in, so we want to make sure that any villagers on this platform are not counted. So we want to come up a total of seven, is that seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then on top of that, stick a wooden block we can get rid of those now like that that's right and then we're going to create another three by three platform 
up in the sky. Then this is going to be our village. It can be we got a three by three platform. That's going to be our village. What makes it a village? Two things make it a village. One of the things is doors. We're going to stick eight doors on this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven there and eight there. We're also going to stick a torch because we don't want anything spawning in there that is unwelcome. And then we're also going to get some wooden planks. And it, it wood works the best, I find. And we're going to stick a wooden block on top of each of these doors because there needs to be a block on top of it that is visible from the sky, from the sun. So that's to be able to shine on it for it to be counted as a village. One of those really, really weird conditions. Um, but that's, that's the way it is. You've got to have sun shining on the block that is above it. We're going to come back to put a village in there in a moment, but that's not what we want to do right now. And then here, we need to start to build up this structure so as we can get some villagers in there too. So we're now going to build up this system and I prefer, just a personal thing, I prefer having completed this lower wall with brick so as it is continuous. You can see there we've got all the way around. I like to put a glass wall all the way around at the top of that. It just is nice to be able to see the villagers inside. It's not essential. The villagers do not need to uh, be able to see out for them to want to breed. But I just got this thing in my head that means that they, they really, really are going to much prefer it, aren't they? So, And then we're also going to bring another glass block, one in. Now this is going to serve two purposes because in a moment we're going to close off the system and if we close off the system without putting this row of glass blocks in then the villagers are just going to stand up on top of the closed system and they're not going to do what we want them to do. This glass block here will stop them from being able to walk on top of this area here which is not something we're interested in. Then opposite the exit point I'm going to come across I'm going to stick a bucket of water in that corner like that. You can see that goes all the way around, all the way around, both sides, and stops at that point. So anything falling in this water will be pushed all the way around and fall down the hole, which is brilliant. Now, a baby villager will be small enough to do that. A big villager will not be small enough to do that. Then, we are going to hoe this area here, because another one of the conditions is that villagers are fed. They want some in their tummy if they are going to breed. This water is going to be plenty to be able to irrigate the whole of that area, which is superb. And then we just want to get ourselves some carrots. I find personally carrots are the best. You could use potatoes. You can use wheat if you want to, but you need a lot more wheat, it seems, to be able to get the villagers to do what you want them to do. But potatoes or carrots are a really, really good source to be able to do this. And then we want to come up and around, and then we need to turn the system on. So get to the corner that you put the lever, which is here, turn that system on, that will close the system up and you can see in here they then will not be able to walk onto that um, step because they're just too tall, they can't get in. So that's what we're after. And then we want to get some villagers in there, we might as well get them cracking, right? So let's find a villager egg. Now I'm going to use a villager egg. Now, you're obviously going to be in survival, so you're not going to have a villager egg. You just want to be able to bring two villagers into the system. You can use the pushy system, like nudging them in. You can use a minecart system. Whatever is the best way for you to get your villagers into this hole, you do whatever you like. But I'm just going to use an egg because I can. And then, because they're not going to be interested at the moment, we've got to give them a little bit of food just to get them cracking. So I'm going to give them each a stack of carrots. So you can have a stack of carrots, mate. There you go. And this fella here, you can have a stack of carrots as well. And that will just be enough. They'll eventually pick them up. There you see, they picked them up. They've got plenty of carrots in their inventory now. And they'll start to become interested in each other as soon as we populate the village upstairs. And we're going to do that in exactly the same way. We're going to get ourselves a villager egg. You are going to have to nudge them in or minecart them in, whatever it is best for you. There we go. We've got a villager there. Now our village is populated. It is active. The Minecraft system is going to start after a little while because it takes a while to work it out. It is going to start to think, hang on a minute, I've got a village with eight doors. I've only got one villager in there. That's not enough. We need to make some more villagers. And it's going to look for villagers that can breed. It will see these villagers under here. It will see that they are eventually going to be willing after a little while. And it will start to allow them to breed. Look, they've already started to get some hearts there. Can you see that? That shows that they're willing. Doesn't mean they're going to breed immediately, but it shows that they are willing. And when those carrots start to grow, 
the brown coat there will start to harvest the carrots, start to distribute the carrots around everybody and replant them and we'll start to get an active system. So that's absolutely superb and we're just going to let that roll. The next thing to do is to build up this system around. I'm not going to show you how I build the actual the, the, the structure of this because it's completely down to you how you make this structure. I'm just going to do a little bit of kind of upside down step and things like that to make it look quite nice and I'll be back when I've done that. Now we've finished off the main structure of this breeder and it is fairly flat I guess. You could make it a little bit more structured but I like to have the glass at the top quite visible should you ever want to get on top of it. I have built a little bit of a ladder platform up here so as when you're ready you can access that lever to be able to turn the closing system off and on which I think is quite important and I've also I've just got this thing about gravity with this floating village at the top I didn't like it so we've put some legs on it you'll notice the legs are still floating it looks a little bit like a squid but we're going to finish that off in a second because I wanted to show you inside because they've already had a baby look already I've literally, just as I was building it, they've got a baby in there, which is absolutely brilliant. And that baby's jumping around, happy as you like, because it's got its mummy and its daddy. And look, this guy's already, look, you ready for another, another one? Do you want another baby? Do you want another one? I think he's quite keen. So what we're going to do now, we're going to close this off. So let's get my um, glass block. And we're just going to put the lid on this, because we never have to get in there again. And just going to put a 3 by 3 glass block platform it keeps it nice and transparent get rid of that one it means that we've now got actual legs on the actual glass it's reinforced glass so don't worry about that it's perfectly fine and that bit is actually now complete and you could finish there if you wanted to you could just gather your villagers from the bottom here and you will be quite comfortable and happy to be able to do that they would be baby villagers but you can still gather them allow them to grow and once they've grown up you know like let one in turn it on again and let them down you, it works you could do that but i want to do something just a little bit more ambitious than that so shall we get on with it yes we shall so the structure is finished and you can see i've gone for something pretty simple it's just a bit of a slab with an access point right at the front there and we've also connected up the top so it doesn't look like it's just hanging there because gravity should be observed so you can see we've put in half slabs but kind of on the the first half rather than the second half on the top this is going to stop mobs from spawning and just getting irritating we've already got a number of villagers doing the do look we've got four adult villagers and a baby in there now as well which is amazing and then in here you can see we put these legs on but i've also put on these uh, buttons and hiding in there you can see there is a dispenser which is full of carrots so what you can see what we can do is if we ever find that we've got a bit of a drop in the number of carrots inside we can just hit one of these buttons and carrot shoots out and then you hit another one and another carrot shoots out and partly the buttons are for I suppose you could say they are for uh, decoration but they also work really really well being four buttons so you can go round and hit a few all uh, kind of one after the other rather than having to wait for the button to finish its cycle and the carrots just get shot in there if you ever get a little bit low so that's that and in here where's it gone around the other side here you can see we've built access to that so if we go up the ladder onto this platform this is the lever that is going to turn the system on and off i.e. to open it up and then up here we can access the top really really easily in survival because it's no good if all you're doing is flying around in creative which like I'm doing so that is the breeder bit finished but what about the collection bit we're going to do something just a little bit over the top with this it's going to be way over the top certainly more than you can ever actually need but I don't care it's going to be brilliant so let's get back when we've done that so as I say I've done something a little bit mental but before I do I just need to point out that I made a bit of an error can you see how the glass is different that um, second row in needs to be level with the first row in otherwise the grown-up villagers can actually fall into the water too and that is not something you want to happen and um, you'll end up emptying your villager breeder which is absolutely rubbish but if you put uh, a glass block just at that level rather than the one level up making the step in motion then what you're going to find is that you can very easily get the kiddie ones going but the adult ones stay there but anyway what have we done well I shall tell you dear viewer what we've done is we've made this completely unnecessarily long and complicated secondary breeder system attached to a transport system now this is not necessarily something I suggest you do I've done it because I've kind of linked two hills between each other and they are far enough apart for the villages not to clash 
So as you know, if you put too many doors next to each other, it all gets messed up. These are far enough apart for it not to matter. So these guys will keep breeding and they will pip little baby villagers that go down that hole down in the corner. Those villagers run along this way. Oh look, there's a villager there as well. Must have escaped. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, so those villagers run along, 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 all the way along here. And then they drop down that hole. And when they get down here, they hit a water blade which is supported with a sign and fall into this little house and this little house has got on its roof another false village which has got a little man in it but more importantly you've got some farming and you've got some villagers and in there you can see we've got two babies already and two grown-ups and they will breed because I'll tell you now that one of those babies is a result of it coming across from the other one and one of those babies is as a result of them having a breeding session which is brilliant so you've got just multiple ways of getting your villagers up and then you can use those to create a trading center or you could use them to put into some kind of I don't know maybe an iron golem farm or something like that but all in all it just makes the number of villagers you can get out of your farm that much greater and I thought that was a bit of a fun idea but obviously you can adapt that in whichever way you want because that is perhaps just a little bit over the top I don't know and I don't care. One slightly wacky but very affected villager breeder. I hope you enjoyed me watching this particular one. It was, okay, yeah, it's gone a little bit mad in terms of that transport system, but it only takes one bucket right at the top because each one of these streams is only seven blocks long. So it just continues along. One bucket of water right up the top and you've got a complete stream all the way down. And that'll go as far as you wanted. If I wanted to go all the way over to that other mountain, that would have worked as well. So that's all right, isn't it? If you've enjoyed this video, please do make sure you slap that like button full in the face. It'll be great to know that you've actually enjoyed it. And then I can keep making these farm videos because they are a lot of fun. And if you haven't done it already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.